Hey everybody, I hope you guys are all healthy and safe. So last week was Huawei's second annual developer conference. You might have heard of it because Huawei's consumer boss Richard Yu dropped a major bombshell that starting next year, we're gonna start seeing Huawei phones use Harmony OS instead of Android. Now, Mr. Yu didn't really elaborate on that much. So right now there are more questions than answers. We don't know if it's a gradual shift from Android to Harmony OS or if it's gonna happen overnight where Huawei's gonna stop using Android completely and use completely Harmony OS, or maybe I'm thinking this might be the case, Huawei's gonna put out both Android and Harmony OS phones at the same time with the intent of giving consumers more options because more options are always good. But regardless, that was huge news that made the headlines of every tech website and even some mainstream news media too. And unfortunately, it kind of overshadowed the rest of the developer conference. And that's a shame because Huawei announced quite a lot of exciting stuff in both software and hardware. So at the event, Huawei introduced six new pieces of hardware, including the watch I'm wearing right now and this laptop right here. I'll get to the hardware in a bit, but first let's go over the software news first, because after all, it is called the Huawei Developer Conference. So Huawei's software announcements can be divided into four categories. The first one is Harmony OS version 2.0. So version one of Harmony OS, which was introduced last year at the Developer Conference, was mostly used in Huawei's IoT products. Version two is gonna go a little bit more mainstream. It's gonna hit more a diverse range of products, including, like Mr. Yu said, potentially smartphones. So the big news of Harmony OS version two is that it's open source. That means the source code is now freely distributed on the internet for anyone to use and modify as they see fit. So the second software announcement is HMS Core 5.0. HMS Core is basically a series of developers kits and APIs that are designed to let developers easily build software for Huawei's ecosystem. These kits include like AR kits, camera kits. So they're like a bunch of code that are pre-written that developers can apply relatively easily. I mean, you and I won't be able to do it, but developers can do it relatively easily and just build something for Harmony OS. So the number of kits in HMS Core have jumped from 15 last year to 56 this year. So that's great news for the 1.8 million registered developers within Huawei's ecosystem. And Huawei also announced there are now 96,000 apps with HMS Core already integrated within. All right, so so far the software stuff we've talked about, they're pretty exciting, but mostly for developers, for consumers like you and I, will never come across it. Like you and I will probably never see HMS Core in its raw form. Instead, what we will see is EMUI 11, the software interface that runs on Huawei smartphones and tablets and potentially other devices. So EMUI this year brings improved multitasking. You can now shrink apps into a floating window that are resizable. That means you can have Twitter running in a mini pop-up window overlaid on top of any other app that you're using. And there's a new always on display with a bunch of custom faces, but the best news is you can make your own. So with EMUI 11, you can now use a video, a picture or a GIF of your choice to put it as your always on display. So the fourth announcement, it's really a series of announcements about the Huawei app gallery. So at the conference, Huawei announced the app gallery now has 490 million active users, which makes it a top three largest app marketplace in the world. I covered this in the past, but Huawei's strategy of the app gallery is to take a global approach, meaning half local, half global. So that means obviously they want the world famous apps on the app gallery, but Huawei will also work with local app developers and popular apps in a specific market or region. So for example, in gaming, Huawei's app gallery recently added globally popular games like Rise of Kingdoms, but then Huawei also worked with local developers in specific countries like Japan to bring over popular games in that country like Langris or Mobile and the educational game Tofu O Sushi. So Huawei's taking the same approach with e-commerce. They recently added AliExpress, and the Polish marketplace Allegro and book retailer Ampeak. Huawei is pouring in a lot of resources into building the app gallery. Okay, so that about wraps it up for software. Now let's get to the fun part, at least for us, hardware. So at the developer conference, Huawei introduced six products, two laptops, two smartwatches, and two wireless audio products. They're all part of Huawei's OnePlus 8 Plus N 
initiative, which is Huawei's vision for an interconnected ecosystem where all the products interact with one another and they're seamlessly connected. Okay, let's talk about the laptops first. So Huawei introduced the MateBook X and the MateBook 14. Now, unfortunately, I have not gotten a chance to test the MateBook X personally. So let's talk about the MateBook 14 first. So this is the MateBook 14 right here. As you can see, it's a pretty sleek and premium laptop with a gorgeous 14 inch 2K panel. It's a touchscreen panel and also three by two aspect ratio. So that gives you more vertical room to do work with. And I've been using this as a work machine for the past three days. So a key difference between this laptop and previous Huawei laptops I tested is that this one does not run on Intel's Core i series. Instead, this one runs on AMD's Ryzen 4000 series. This model in particular is the highest end model running Ryzen's 4800H series. That's an eight core 16 thread SOC, so it is really powerful. In fact, going by benchmarks, this CPU is more powerful than Intel's Core i5 and i7. So I've been using this for work. Everything has been zipping around really fast and this thing just performs like a beast. All of Huawei's previous hardware traits that a lot of people liked with the laptops remain here. You have a near bezel screen and you have a webcam that's hidden on the top row of the F keys. So that's great because you don't have to worry about needing to put a piece of tape over your webcam anymore because your webcam is always covered. That one touch power button with a fingerprint scanner embedded around it is still here. So when the machine is turned off and you press it once, it will go from a complete shutdown machine into the home screen ready to go in just six seconds. It is so fast. This trackpad has also improved. It's larger with better tactile feedback and it's just more accurate all around. The keyboard as usual is great. This is one of my favorite keyboards in the laptop world right now. You get quite a lot of key travel. Typing on this has been perfectly fine. And you also have a lot of ports on this thing too. So you have two USB A's on the right side of the machine. And on the left, you have a USB-C that powers the 56 watt hour battery, a headphone jack, and the HDMI out port. And the 56 watt hour battery is enough to power this thing. At least from my testing so far, it can go a full eight hour workday without any issues. Now this whole thing weighs 1.5 kg, which is 3.3 pounds. So it's not the lightest laptop around, but that's where the Huawei MateBook X comes in. So the MateBook X, as I said, I don't have it on me right now, but I'm impressed by what I've seen. It is definitely one of the thinnest laptops around. It measures 13.6 millimeter at its thickest point, and it weighs only one kg. That's 2.2 pounds. It's powered by Intel Core i5 or i7, and that screen, it's just as bezel-less as the MateBook 14, but the resolution has been bumped up from 2K here to 3K. So it's a 3K touchscreen panel. The trackpad on the Maple X has been improved even more. It's 26% larger than last year's, and it has a improved superior haptic tactile engine underneath. So when you click into it, you can feel really good tactile feedback. And that trackpad also doubles as an NFC pad. So for you to connect your Huawei devices to the laptop via Huawei one hop. Okay, next up, let's look at smart watches. So Huawei introduced two watches. We have here the Huawei Watch GT2 Pro, and then this one, the Huawei Watch Fit. So we'll talk about the watch GT2 Pro first because I like it a lot. So I love how this watch looks. It looks premium, but also classy and minimalistic. So you notice that the bezels does not raise over the screen. There's no extra bump. It is just one flat glass. This is a piece of sapphire glass, so it's scratch resistance and pretty strong. And the casing is made of titanium with this brushed metal look. And I just love the premium vibe all around. The straps are leather and they feel so much better on my wrist than the rubber straps that come with many other smartwatches. So in terms of tracking, this watch can do everything. It's got a 24 seven heart rate sensor. It's got a blood oxygen monitor. It's got built in GPS and it's intelligent enough to track 15 sports at a professional level. So you have all the basic stuff like indoor cycling, hiking, elliptical, weightlifting, but you also have relatively niche and new stuff that other smartwatches don't offer like golfing and skiing. Now this is an AMOLED display so as you can see colors are very punchy and blacks are very deep it's just gorgeous to look at. I've been wearing this for three days now and all the tracking 
from step count to heart rate to sleep has been very accurate. So because this is a Huawei device, you know battery life is going to be epic. So in a single charge, the Watch GT2 Pro can go for two full weeks. And the best part, my favorite feature, if you need to charge this watch, you don't need to go grab a proprietary cable because this thing supports Qi wireless charging. So that means the same charging pad you probably are already using to charge your smartphone can charge this watch. Or if you have a new Huawei smartphone with reverse wireless charging, you can just charge your watch off the back of your Huawei P40 Pro or Mate 30 Pro. Okay, so let's look at the Huawei watch fit now. So this one has a design that's built more for sports and the screen is a 1.6 inch AMOLED panel. So once again, you have very deep blacks, complete deep blacks and very punchy reds and yellows, vibrant color. Now on a single charge, the watch fit can go for 10 days. It provides almost all the same fitness tracking, health tracking, that I mentioned earlier with the Huawei Watch GT2 Pro. One new feature that's exclusive to the Watch Fit, it's animated guided workouts. Now it's not available here yet, it's gonna come via software update, but when it happens, you'll be able to do workouts with an animated trainer on the screen, basically showing you proper form and postures, which is quite important. Now the Watch Fit is also very sleek. It measures just 10.7 millimeter at its thickest points, and it weighs 21 grams. So Huawei Watch Fit is ideal for people who want smartwatch to track all the fitness and also get notifications, all that, but they don't want something bulky and they don't want to have to charge these things regularly. All right, so next up, wireless audio. So Huawei introduced the Huawei Freelace Pro and the Huawei FreeBuds Pro. If you follow my channel, you may already know that I made a dedicated video on these because I like them so much. So the standout feature of these Huawei FreeBuds Pro is that Huawei is marking these as the world's first wireless earbuds to have intelligent dynamic noise cancellation. So what that means is that Huawei's AI algorithms will work alongside the three microphones located in the stems of these buds and intelligently detect the scene that you're in because it makes a difference whether you're at in a quiet office or on a busy street in Hong Kong or sitting at a beach or something. So the earbuds will analyze the sound around you and adjust the active noise cancellation accordingly. So for example, if I'm sitting next to an air conditioner that's making a really loud sound, then these might lower the low frequency hums that are usually associated with an air conditioning sound. Now it's a lot of technical talk and marketing speak so ultimately that doesn't matter other than user experience. I'm gonna tell you right now, these do in fact have some of the best active noise cancellation I've tested anywhere. And I own like probably close to a dozen true wireless earbuds. But that's not the reason why I love these so much. The reason I love these so much is because they also have probably the best transparency mode, which Huawei calls awareness mode, I've ever tested. Again, better than any other earbud I've tested. So transparency mode, or awareness mode basically means that the earbuds will open up some or one of its mics and let outside sound in through to your ear. So that means you can wear these earbuds and still hear what's going on around you. That's particularly important for people who like to jog at night or maybe cyclists. So these transparency mode, it's so good because they find a really perfect balance in that I can still listen to music or podcasts and still hear if someone is speaking to me. And battery life on these are great, of course. So on a single charge, these can go for seven hours if you don't use active noise cancellation. I mean, that's insane, seven hours. But if you turn on active noise cancellation, you still get pretty good battery life at four and a half hours. Okay, so next up, the Huawei Freelace Pro. So these are a more, you know, retro design in terms of wireless earbuds. They are connected and they're, they're meant to go around just like this. Now audio quality on this is really good because there's a 14 millimeter magnesium alloy driver inside. So sound is really full with really crisp mids, clean highs and really like full bass. The buds clip together magnetically like this. And I like that whenever the buds connect together, the whole thing shuts off. So that means you don't have to remember, oh, let me power this down now. Just take it out on your ear, put them together and it's off already. This will save battery life too. Not that you will need to because on a single charge, 
the Free Days Pro can go for 24 hours. And if you need to charge, you don't need to go grab a cable because you just pull here and here's a USB-C plug. So just plug this into a smartphone or plug this into a laptop with a USB-C plug and charge your Freelance Pro right there. So these are ideal for people who just want a reliable set of earbuds on the airplane. You know, that won't run out of battery because these have ANC active noise cancellation too. And they're great for sport, obviously. It's rated IP55 for water resistance. So you can take these swimming, just not deep sea diving. Anyway, so that about wraps it up for the six products that Huawei introduced. Of all my favorite products, my favorite one, it's probably the Maple 14 because this is a beast of a machine and it's just so sleek and clean. And I've been using it as my work machine for the last few days and probably going forward. I'm also partial to the Huawei Watch GT2 Pro because of how premium and sleek this looks. I like how fashionable it looks. It kind of goes with any outfit. So even if I'm going to a wedding and I put on a suit, I feel like this will go with the suit. It doesn't look like I'm wearing a mini gadget smartwatch. This looks like a timepiece. So overall, I think the Huawei Developer Conference had something for everyone. If you're a developer, you got some great news in that your job just became a lot easier to build apps for Huawei's ecosystem. If you're a gadget geek like me, you have several cutting edge new products to play with. Or if you're someone who are just into breaking news and gossip, Richard Yu gave you a bombshell news too. So uh, it has something for everyone. Anyway, that's it for this recap of the second annual Huawei Developer Conference. I hope this video was helpful. That's it for now. Stay healthy. Take care. Thanks for watching.